Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. Fictional universes that are micromanaged to the extent of J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle-earth are far and few between. At a surface level, Middle-earth is little more than just a fancy setting for the tales of the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings to play out in, and for the majority of people that's perfectly adequate. However, if you're a massive nerd like myself, you just can't resist asking more questions about this world. Where is it? How did it start? What else is out there other than what we see in the books? Luckily, Tolkien was just as fascinated by these questions as I and many other people are. Through countless writings in the likes of the Silmarillion and letters, essays, histories and unfinished writings, Tolkien elevated Middle-earth from just a fancy setting to a living, breathing universe. In fact, at points, Tolkien stated that Middle-earth wasn't an alternate reality, but in fact our world many years ago, and the stories he wrote are actually just his trans translations of stories he found written about this world all those years ago. Tolkien had answers for pretty much everything and anything in relation to Middle Earth, from the big and small differences in the land's races to a complete history of the world. He even kept track of Middle Earth's lunar cycles over the Lord of the Rings and wrote about what races could and could not grow beards. Tolkien took extreme detail in every single aspect of his world, and luckily for us this includes the world's languages and its etymologies. As mentioned, these stories are supposed to be ancient texts which have been found and translated into English. As mentioned though, Tolkien's extreme detail means that it wasn't being translated from gibberish in the guise of an ancient writing, it was being translated into English from languages of Tolkien's own creation. Tolkien adored languages and language creation. Some of his invented tongues actually predate his stories, and it's been said that a driving force behind the writings of the Lord of the Rings was also he had a world for his made up languages to live in. He created languages spoken by dwarves, orcs, man and ents, though his most known languages have to be his elvish tongues. Out of his many elvish tongues and dialects, his two most complete and popular are called Sindarin and Quenya. These are seen as the de facto elf Tolkien languages and if someone says they speak Tolkien elvish, it's most likely one of these two. It's not only in our universe that these languages take priority however, as most of the place names in Middle Earth that we know about are in one of these two languages. Well at least the name for these places that we read of in the book slash the names Tolkien wrote down for them. This is because like in our real world, places in Middle Earth have completely different names in different languages. In example, Mordor in Dwarvish is called Naglun. As mentioned, this is incredibly detailed and Tolkien really left no stone unturned. Tolkien didn't create these names and languages out of thin air however. What's also so impressive about these names and their etymologies is how similar they are to the etymologies we have for place names in our real world. Whether that be through similar word forming elements cropping up in multiple names like they do in our world, or words being altered across time like we see with names here too. Tolkien was clearly inspired by etymology of our world and applied the conventions of place name creation we have to his fictional lands. We can explain the names of these places and it not seem too different at all to how we explain the names of very real places. I find this incredible. Not only did Tolkien create fictional languages, names and words, he created fictional etymologies for these fictional words and names that fitted into his fictional languages. And these words? their etymologies and the languages they are in coexist with one another in the same way that very real names, languages and etymologies of planet earth do. Tolkien was really in a league of his own when it came to language, so as we delve into the etymology of middle earth's place names, you must remember that while these names might not have the most interesting origins, it's incredible that these fictional places have fictional etymologies to begin with. Take Mordor in example, as mentioned it has a dwarven name, but the name is more popular popularly known as comes from Sindarin. Mordor is comprised of the Sindarin Moor meaning dark slash black and Dor meaning land, so the name simply means the dark slash black lands. As mentioned these etymologies don't have the most exciting origins. It's especially fitting that Mordor, which is the home of all things evil in Middle Earth, has a name meaning black slash dark. Like in our real world however, word forming elements appear
appear in multiple names across the globe, like how many countries end with ear or land. This is the case in Middle Earth too. The door meaning land at the end of Mordor is the same door that appears at the end of Gondor, with the former part of this name meaning stone, so the name Gondor means stone land. I just find it incredible that Tolkien factored in places having similar names in his world, just like ours. Venturing north of Gondor we arrive in Rohan. This kingdom is perhaps best known for their love of horses and their people being expert riders. They are so known for their horses that the land was actually named after them. While Rohan is a mannish kingdom, its name still comes from Sindarin. Initially in Sindarin, the land was called Rohand. This comes from the Sindarin word for horses, Roch, and their place name forming element of And. Eventually, however, this name was adapted by men into Rohan as we have it today. This too really reflects real world name origins. We often see words coming into being from ancient tongues and getting adapted by modern speakers, like with many words originating in Latin and then changing over time but still sounding somewhat like their original Latin roots. I guess Cinderin could be seen as Middle Earth's Latin. North of Rohan, however, are two of Middle Earth's best known forests, Lothlorien and Fangorn. Lothlorien is one of the most beautiful parts of all of Middle Earth and is a place of elven origins. Its name seems to actually derive from the two languages of Cinderin and Quenya. The first part of the name Loth is Cinderin, meaning flower slash bloom, and the latter Lorien part is Quenyun and means dream slash slumber. So this magical name could mean something like blossoming dreamland. We have places in our real world too which have etymologies comprising of multiple languages, like how Portugal is a name of joint Latin and Celtic roots. Fangorn Forest isn't quite as appealing it would seem, and while it lacks elves it instead has another kind of resident, the Ents. The leader of the Ents was known as Treebeard, however that is just his name translated into English from Sindarin. In Sindarin his name is Fangorn comprised of the Cinderid Fang and Gorn, meaning beard and tree respectively. So this forest is named after a person of importance. Likewise, so many places in our real world named after people of importance too. Like how Austin, Texas is named after Stephen F. Austin. Isengard is an interesting name, and it's a name the people of Middle Earth probably wouldn't have actually used. This is actually Tolkien's old English translation of its Cinderin name. In Cinderin, this evil place was called Anglanost, with this name meaning Iron Fortress. This seems like a fitting way to name a fortress in Tolkien's world and in ours. Another impressive man made structure in Middle Earth was Casa Dum. Well, when I say man made, I ought to say dwarf made, as this was their proud mine and settlement. This is actually a dwarven name and means dwarves mansion. Dwarves were very different to elves and this is seen in their language too. The name Khazad Dom is much sharper and tougher sounding than any of the Sindarin names we have mentioned before. Dwarves in our real folklore come from Norse roots and it seems Tolkien was inspired by Norse languages when it came to theirs. However, when Khazad Dom was overtaken by the Balrog and fell into disrepair, it gained a new name name, one that was in Cinderin, that being Moria, with this name coming from the Cinderin Moor meaning dark and Ea meaning abyss. The name literally means dark abyss. I refer to Cinderin as Tolkien's Latin and here we see the Ea suffix which is incredibly present in Latin too, though it has a completely different meaning in Cinderin. Still interesting to note. Rovanian makes up the more eastern half of the classic Middle Earth map. While not particularly visited during the Lord of the Rings, it's where the majority of the Hobbit takes place. In the map that accompanies the Hobbit, this area is simply called the Wilderland. As the Hobbit book is supposed to have been written by Bilbo and translated by Tolkien, we can assume that Bilbo was the one who called it the Wilderland. This is seemingly its Hobbit name, with Rolvanian being its Cinderin name and also meaning Wilderland. Much like our real world, maps in different languages show us different names. As this area was shown to us primarily through Bilbo's eyes and it's his account we have it means a lot of the names here are more hobbit-like. It's believed hobbits spoke a language called Westron, which was the common tongue on Middle Earth, and for all intents and purposes, English. It's because of this and Tolkien's translations of Bilbo's writings as to why the Hobbit is filled with less elven place names. Mirkwood, Misty Mountains, Lake Town, these are all pretty literal English sounding names. However, some do have Cinderin names too, like the Lonely Mountain, Schmaug's Domain. It's also known as Elabor, 
which is simply Lonely Mountain in Sindarin. West of the Misty Mountains is Eriador. It's here where the early days of the Fellowship's journeys took place. This land is not as disturbed by the goings on of the wider world compared to the rest of Middle Earth. It's much more isolated. That's why its name is thought to mean isolated slash lonely land in Sindarin, with that door suffix present yet again. Another etymology that wouldn't go amiss in our real world. An elven location in this region is Rivendell. This is the location's Westron name, meaning Cloven Dell. In Sindarin, it's called Imaladris, meaning Deep Dale of the Cleft. Iriador is where the Shire and its town of Hobbiton are too. It's well known that the Shire is meant to be England, with Hobbiton being Oxford. It's because of this as to why this region and its largest settlement have such English sounding names. Shire is a term used here meaning a county slash region, and it's seen at the end of many place names like Oxfordshire and Yorkshire. Hobbiton uses the English tun suffix, which simply means enclosed or town like we see with Brighton. So we know Hobbiton just means town of the Hobbit. It's perhaps here where the parallels between our own place names and Tolkien's are at their most similar. What about the name for this land as a whole? Middle Earth. Well, funnily enough, despite all these deep names of Tolkien's creation, Middle-earth was actually a name he borrowed from Norse and Germanic mythology. The ancient realm of man was known as Midgar, which basically meant being in the middle of the known worlds and universes. It was this concept that inspired the name of Middle-earth. However, the land has a name in the Elvish languages too, with its name in Quenya being Endor, which is a name that will ring a bell for fans of another nerdy franchise, but the names of that universe can be explained another time. Regardless, despite how deeply J.R.R. Tolkien seemed to have been in his own fancy world, he was clearly very aware of how things worked in our world, and this can be perfectly seen in the place names of Middle Earth and just how much their etymologies reflect our own. Middle Earth places were suggested by Kevin Iger, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as name explains patron saint of Middle Earth places. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a name explain video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just $1 a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patreon is vital to Name Explain, and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at Name Explain YT. On Instagram, I'm also Name Explain YT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, thank you all so much.